Hello students, today I am going to discuss a very interesting area called information use studies. Now let us look at what is exactly means by information use study. This use may pertain to oral informations or recorded informations. Every day we use a lot of oral informations. For example, a girl is asking her mother how to cook a particular food item. So mother is giving the instruction that the girl is preparing the food. Before starting for the railway station, we ring up the inquiry counter as to know how the, uh, what is the time when a particular train is arriving or departure time and also we collect a lot of information for this purpose. The moment we hear that the train is in time or late, we plan accordingly. Now there is a very important need for information use study. Now let us look at the procurement policy. Procurement of recorded information involves cost, often in terms of millions of rupees. If it is seen that the procured information is not being used adequately, then it may be assumed that the part of the money is going waste. A study done by Roy and Paul indicates that almost 50% of the books of a research library are never used. The statistics clearly show that there has been some flaw in the procurement of books. The library usually receives books through purchase, exchange and gifts. In whatever way they may come to the library, their non-use means some wastage of money. It may appear that books received through the gifts involve no cost as no money is to be paid to the donor for these books. However, money is spent for their transportation, processing, maintenance, etc. Moreover, these unused books occupy valuable space in the library. There are various factors for non-use of books and obsolence is one of the most important factors. A book might have been of use when purchased. However, with the passage of time, the contents of the book have become outdated leading to its non-use. Now, reading or switch over to the electronic media, in fact, you all of you know that the electronic media or digital media has created a complete revolution in this area. An active library grows continuously in size as new books are added to the library every year. This generates requirement of further space. There are two ways, either the library is expanded with the addition of new rooms or new buildings or some space is generated by weeding out unused books. It is mainly through use study we identify that the unused books which may be removed from the shelves to generate space. In a research library, periodicals are in great demand. Year after year they consume huge amount of space. If on online vision of these uh, online version of this periodical is procured, including the back volumes, immediately the space problem is solved to a great extent. Constraints in information use, so use of information is greatly hindered because of various constraints. It is a uh, common that libraries in torrid summer or extreme cold are used very less where there is no air conditioning or frequent power failures. Vashist has pointed out quite a long uh, few constraints in the use of the e-resources revealed through the user studies. In summing up, it may say that use studies point out to defects in procurement policy, identifies the books and the back volumes of the periodicals that are no more in use, highlights the constraints that are leading to less use of books, periodicals and other documents. The types of information use study, in the information use study, the sources which people consult to gather information are usually studied. Information use study can be categorized as follows, like user based information study, profession based information use study, subject based information study, non-electronic source based information study, electronic source based information use study and the oral information use study. User based information study, studies are conducted to find out how common people, children, students, academicians, scholars, faculty members and many other use the various types of information. Chokhande and Kumar studied the information use patterns of faculty members and research scholars of Amravati University. In another study by Gopalakrishnan and Ramesh Babu have studied the information use pattern by the academicians of the NIFT centers in India. Now when we consider about single document, single document in this case we have the example of Science Citation Index who use uh, has been studied by Brahmi. Specific type of document like textbooks, monographs, encyclopedias, directories, etc. are specific type of documents. The use of this type of documents is also studied. For example, the use of encyclopedias in schools and public libraries has been studied by Campello et al. Ernst uh, studied the use of telephone directory in an academic library. Roy and Paul used studied the use of books 
in a research library. The use of bibliography has been studied by Biblikova. So, category of documents. So, documents are categorized as primary, secondary and tertiary. I am sure all of you must be knowing by now. U studies are possible with documents of all the categories. Examples of a few categories are given below like reference books pertaining to secondary sources. Aditya Kumari and Talawar studied the use of reference sources in university libraries of Karnataka. Government publications pertain to mixed category as all categories of publications are produced by various governments. Fola Adio studied the use of government publications in academic libraries in Nigeria. Whereas Shema Baker also dwelt on the use of government publications in general. Information sources in general, Biradar et al. studied the use of information sources in a public library. Parvat Thamma and Shankar Reddy also studied the use of information resources in public libraries situated in Bidar district of Karnataka state. Tarasar and Talikoti investigated the utilization of resources of city central library in Gulbarga. Whereas Varma et al. use of collection of an institute in Gwalior, India. So Gurudev Singh studied the use of information sources in college libraries of Delhi. In fact, uh, students please remember these are some of the very important case studies also. So in, when you will read these papers also research papers in great detail, you will come to know all these informations in great detail also. So these are very very important case studies which I am highlighting here for all of you. Electronic source based information use study. Some studies of this category are discussed below are e-resources. These include the online bibliographic databases, web, consortia, e-journals, e-books, e-signs, etc. Anil Kumar and Ashok analyze the use of online source resources of a digital library. Bhansode and Pujar studied the use of web based resources by the research scholars at Shivaji University. Bhavakutti and Muhammad Hanifa explored the specific factors that promoted or hindered the use of online information resources in special libraries in Kerala. Jyotin Singh sur uh, surveyed the use of internet based e-resources at Manipur University. Muhammad Hanifa investigated the use of e-resources by research scholars in special libraries in Kerala. Zhang also examined the use, scholarly use of web based electronic resources. Ibrahim Natarajan et al. as well as Patil and Parmeshwar studied the use of e-resources in the United Arab Emirates University, Annamalai University and Gulbarga University respectively. And the Vashish pointed out the constraints of the use of electronic resources. E-resources through consortia medium and this is a very very important area in today's context. Parmeshwar and uh, Kumbhargaudar and Vinapani et al. and Valmiki I mean all of them have studied very extensively the use of e-resources through the UGC Infonet consortia by the research scholars of Department of Canada Chemistry, Gulbaga University, researchers of Manipur University and Karnataka State Universities. E-resources by the subject. Many subject specialists search internet to use web resources. Biradar and Sampath Kumar studied the use of web resources by physicists of the universities in Karnataka. In another study, Sujatha and Mudhal investigated the use of electronic information sources at the College of Fisheries, Mangalore, India and the court studied the use of e-resources by the teachers and researchers of the science and engineering and technology faculties in Guru Nanak Dev University. When I am talking about e-journals, the e-journals are in electronic form and also available online. Researchers prefer to use this journal as they are available much faster as compared to their printed version. As such, there are a number of studies in the use of electronic resources are known as e-journals. Kaiser Nikam and Pramodini studied the use of e-journals by the academic community at the University of Mysore. In another paper, Singh investigated the use of online journals at the Jamia Millia Islamia Library. Guna Shekharan et al. studied the usage of electronic journals through consortia by the students and members of the faculty of uh, Banari Aman Institute of Technology. The same type of study has been conducted by the Kumbhar and Hadagali with faculty and the research scholars of Karnataka University Dharwar as their sample. Muhammad and Srilatha as well as Raja and Upadhyay examined the use of e-journals by the doctoral students of Calicut University and researchers of Aligarh Muslim University respectively. So once again students I am reiterating that 
please remember the, the these are very very important case studies for each and every component which I am talking about today. E journals by the subject Bhatt and Sampath Kumar studied the scholarly journals on library and information science available on the web. CD based sources like many databases are now available in CDs especially in CD-ROMs. Ali surveyed the use of optical disk database in Iran. Gupta studied the use of CD-ROM databases at the Indian Agriculture Research Institute library. Internet based studies like many researchers have conducted the studies on the use of the internet by the teachers, research scholars, students, colleagues um, and the schools uh, covering the various disciplines. One must study is conducted by Kanungo on the use of the internet in the scholarly communication of social scientists of IGNO. The study ascertained the use of the internet in the scholarly communication of the social scientist in IGNO and analyze its impact on their research and working in the open distance learning or ODL environment. Finally, uh, findings of the study highlighted purposes as well as the frequency of the use of the internet by the social scientist, their methods of locating, accessing and using the information on the internet itself. So, uh, students now will talk about the oral information use study. A village level worker disseminates information about a high yielding variety of rice to the farmers of a village, tells them about the productivity of the variety, method of cultivation, requirement of fertilizer and irrigation, availability of seeds, etc. So now, a study may be conducted after a year or so to find out how many farmers have cultivated the new variety. If the result is encouraging, then it will be assumed that the information has been used extensively. In a weekly market, the employees of a bank announce with a drum beating that the opening of its branch where from the people will be able to take loan for the purchase of cows, bullocks, construction of house, education of the children, etc. In no time, the people started crowding the bank for opening the account as well as demanding uh, loans for various purposes. Whenever a villager spots a carnivorous animal in the vicinity, he or she informs and within the minutes of the information spreads throughout the village and the people take safer shelter. This also indicates that the full utilization of the information given, the use of the oral information is demonstrated many a times by its direct effect. So you can imagine that how this kinds of examples of oral information can play a pragmatic role in these areas. Conducting the information use study, the non-electronic resources like textbook, monograph, treaties, handbooks, manuals, dictionaries, encyclopedias, yearbooks, many of them. So there is a huge number of resources which are available in the library. Now use study is possible with any one of them of the items. Periodicals are a group of items such as reference sources, government publications or with all the items. Use study by itself can be full fledged study or it can be a form of a bigger study. But the precaution is that while conducting the use study, you should be very clearly pinpoint the items. In some studies, you find that the books, uh, yearbooks, handbooks, etc. are also in included in that. Usage of measuring, you know, uh, measuring methods. Now, there are various methods to find out the usage of documents. Some of the methods are quite simple and amenable to manual operations. There are other methods that requires questionnaire, interview, computer for data analysis, etc. Dot on the spine method, this is a simple manual method. Whenever a book is issued, a dot is put on the spine. This method is highly useful for reading out books. While browsing through the shelves, it will be extremely easy to identify the books that have not been uh, uh, used ever since. These books may be taken out of the shelves and placed before the authorized committees to decide which books are to be weeded out. Many libraries stack unused books at an alternate location. For that purpose also this method is useful. This method is useful for small and medium sized enterprise. The libraries that have huge collection in terms of lacks of volume, this method will be cumbersome and highly time consuming. This method cannot reveal the use of these books that are not issued out say reference books. Checking of library records, many libraries keep records of books that are issued out. By checking those records also the use of books can be determined. This method also uh, you know cannot determine the use of books that can, are not used uh, issued out or the use within the library. Then another very important method is citation analysis. 
users of higher education, research institution, writing article, research papers, etc., whatever they are writing, so they gets highlighted. And more the highlighting is done, so more the usage of the resources can be easily estimated. For doing the use uh, study, the theses, research papers, monograph, test books are written by the students and faculty members during the past five years are exhaustively searched. Entries can be prepared manually or usually using a computer for all the citations appearing for all the publications. After the entries have been made prepared, they will be arranged periodical wise or book wise. In the periodical wise arrangement, it will be seen that there are many entries pertaining to a few periodicals. For preserving, preparing a rank list of periodicals, you are count the entries. The, to prepare a rank list of periodicals, you are to count the occurrence of each of the periodical titles. When you arrange them titles according to the descending frequency of occurrence, you will get a rank list of periodicals. This rank list will indicate the titles you have been used heavily, moderately or sparingly. So this is a very important, you know, checking the library records. It gives a lot of data it, and it can take helps in lot of the, you know, decision making process also. Observation methods. In observation method, the observer silently observes and notes down the books, periodicals and other documents being used by the readers within the library. It's a traditional method. Another way of doing the work is to ask the readers to not to shelve the books which they use during the day. Thus, all the documents they have been used will be on the reading on the table. By checking the documents, it will be known that the documents our readers have used during the day. In fact, we have used this method extensively in my previous organization called Terry. Interview method. In this method, users of the library are specially asked by the investigators about the document they have used. This job is based on sitting with the user along with a structured list of interview questions item by item. The user will be asked and the replies will be recorded at that the precise moment. Questionnaire method. This is the most widely used method and can be used even if the user is scattered at different places. Depending on the need for the questionnaire is framed, taking care that no item is missed out. Sampling method. In this method, the selection of the sample is a big factor as the result of a survey is largely dependent on the sample. A used study in most cases is a library-based study. The library may be an independent unit or it may be attached to an organization. The respondents are available within the library and organization is still what you need is structured list of questions. The list will have to be framed keeping in view the type of survey you want to conduct. Some of the examples of the questionnaire methods, if you want to conduct a used study of library and even periodicals, like for example, uh, the periodicals being received like for example, American libraries, Annals of Library Information Science, Calcutta University uh, Journal of Information Studies, then Desi Doc Journal, so uh, Dilip Com Ahmedabad, Granthagar from, by, from Kolkata, Eyes Lake. So these are some of the things, examples of the questionnaire methods, so you have a list of you know the journals and you can find out the usability rate of these journals also. Ask the respondent, that's a very important thing, how they use it. Use it daily, use it a few times in a week, used it once in a or twice in a week, used less than once in a week, used rarely and not used. The users the, of the periodicals are the students, research scholars and faculty members of LIS professional as well as others. Using the three parameters such as periodical users and purpose of use, you can conduct the study. Your questionnaire will be short, simple and filling of the questionnaire will not take time. Presentation of the results, use studies are generally bibliometric studies. Results of a use study are to be presented with tables and figures is done in a bibliometric paper whereby results trends become apparent without any difficulty. The data gathered according to the simple sample questionnaire given by above may be analyzed and presented in the form of tables, bar diagrams, etc. This is a, you know, a, a kind of an output I am showing you where the you know, total comments were received uh, based on that and you can see that 21 percent people are uh, talking, I mean giving their feedback regarding availability of the study space, 18 percent is talking about the general positive feedback, 11 percent is talking about the library staff, then 6 percent is talking about the library hours, then the book delivery and the interlibrary loan. Printers, scanners and copies 5%, electricity outlets, pump where basically charging points is around 5% and then the miscellaneous comments is around 23%. So when you, so these are very, very important areas where it gives you a, it gives you a, you know, a, a, a kind of a complete result. The presentation which I was talk, showing you, the complete presentation that how 
the data is collected from the different sources and presented so that a decision making process can be taken based on that itself. So, it is a very very important. This is another example of proportion of inquiries by the user category. Like for example, degrees and non-degree students, master students, FT academic staff, PT academic staff or admin staff or other categories and the externals. So, you can show different kinds of category because in any institutions you know different types of categories can come. So, that is a very important thing to understand actually. You can also this particular table gives you the level of need of satisfactions. Because when you are talk, when you, you are working with the users, one of the important component is that how much they are satisfied. So, there are three columns were made, how much they are much satisfied, how much they are satisfied and how much they are not satisfied. So, you one can easily find out that which are the areas which needs uh, improvement. So, when there is a moderate satisfaction or there is not at all satisfaction and all, there is a lot of improvement is required on those areas. So, these kinds of you know user survey is a very very important thing based on which you collect a lot of data and, you, and it helps the library professionals to take the decisions about or the competent authority to take appropriate decisions in the particular you know parlance and all. So, this is a, a, an example, I am typical example of a questionnaire I am showing you where uh, you can use this in the form of uh, say uh, a ready made questionnaire, you can get it printed and circulated or nowadays which is very popular that you can use some of the platforms like survey monkey and all or question pro, you can use those uh, platforms or maybe on google forms also you can use it and then you can circulate it to your users. So, once you have circulated this kind of informations, immediately you start getting all your information from all of them and it will give you a complete analytical data based on this. So, it is a very very important to catch all these informations and to make a right decisions on those areas. So, it is a very very important area we need to find out about this. This is an another example of you know uh, like on a graphical presentations that uh, where exactly your library stands on various aspects. So, you know which are the areas got the highest ranking and which are got the lowest ranking. So, it gives you a lot of directions to you know for you to get into that. So, that is a very very important area which you should look into. This is another examples where a detailed you can so it is it's a basically a typical example of a research library. So, so when you are when you know that your library is on this category, so your questionnaire which you are framing for the usage of the resources is also different that you need to understand that. So, once your questionnaire is very different, so you can imagine when you have collected all this data, so these data is going to give you a graphical mechanism, a complete analytical framework then it is giving, it is showing you the analytics that your particular, this particular program, um, uh, particular research library is providing service in what, what are the major areas. That is a very, very important area and it shows the different, you know, you can see the different types of, you know, components which are marked into it. This is a very interesting area, uh, uh, a website called AIT library. It's a, uh, I would request uh, everybody to visit that. In AIT library, you, when you, what you will find that they conduct on a regular basis the user satisfaction survey. Even during the lockdown period of this pandemic, they have conducted their user satisfaction survey. And if you visit to this particular website, you will come to know that they have already done it and there are a lot of things are there in this particular component. Then this is an, another example I am showing, see it needs to decision, you have to take a decision what areas basically you want to do, whether you want to go for a question pro that is an online uh, for carrying, catching the you know information from the people or you can distribute the questionnaire as I have shown in the, pro, uh, in the picture also. So, the, in summary what I would like to say information use and user studies various types of information use studies are encounters such as user based, use studies, profession based, uh, use studies, subject based, non electronic source based or electronic source based etcetera. All this type have been described quoting the examples of studies conducted by the various people. 
Your study is possible with a single document, a specific type of a document or a particular type of category of information sources or information sources in general. All these have been discussed with examples in the electronic based information sources like e-resources, e-journals, CD based sources, internet that have been done. Some of the examples of the user use of oral information have been provided, conducting of information use studies related to non-electronic and electronic resources have been discussed. A number of methods have been described, how a questionnaire is to be framed for a questionnaire method study has been elaborated upon, a sample questionnaire was also shown to all of you. So I think in a nutshell, you have come to know what is the importance, what is the effectiveness and the efficacy of an information use study in a library information center. Thank you very much. Myself, Dr. Shantanu Ganguri, the Chief Librarian of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi.